Enough people have complained that I guess I'll do a voiceover. Here you go. In case you were wondering who the Natty Champ is, that ain't Keegan. That is the Junior Gravel National Champ. Not sure if he should be wearing that jersey right now. I might be a goofball for not knowing who this homie in the Toyota bibs is, but after hearing how gnarly the gravel here at Big Sugar is, I'm thinking he might have the right bike choice. Full suspension gravel bike? Yeah, let's do it. For all those bike nerds out there wondering what my equipment choice looks like, I am running the Specialized Crux 1x SRAM Axis with a 48 tooth chain ring, a 1044 cassette, and tire choice, drum roll please, the Challenge Getaway XP 45 edition. We are back in the race and we are coming up hot on the first turn to hit the dirt and it is a fight for position because once we hit the dirt there are a series of sharp turns and you do not want to be at the back of the group for those turns. It's a mad dash to the front. Crit life baby. Alright, if you're wondering what just happened and why I'm yelling don't be stupid at somebody, it's because this guy on my left decided that he didn't like it that I was in front of him and accelerated into me and bumped bars, which is never a good idea as we're going high speed into a sharp turn onto dirt. And so obviously I got a little frustrated and yelled at him, but no sweat because I was able to make the move and pass him directly following in that turn. All right, and here's where things get a little sketchy. We come around this turn, there's a Jeep, it stopped. For some reason, the, the lead moto com comes to a stop. And so we're all like riding into the lead moto. Everybody's yelling at him, everybody's freaking out. And, uh, but I'm pretty stoked because I'm at the front. But let's not get too excited because right after all that happens, I've got to pull over because my chain has fallen off somehow in the craziness of cars and motos and all that stuff, my chain has decided to fall off. So I stop, fix it. Luckily, since I was so far forward in the group, I'm able to fix it and I'm not that far off the back of the group by the time I get rolling again. It only takes me a couple minutes to catch back up. Although it only took me about 10 seconds to stop and fix my chain, I was chasing for right about five minutes and my normal life power was about 400. So definitely a match that I didn't want to burn this early in the race, but I'm glad to still be in the race. At this point, I'm still chasing and these are just guys that have gotten gapped off the main group. But here I am catching on to the back of the main peloton and I go into this mode of, all right, I need to move up pretty quick before splits start to happen in the group. 
Uh, and so I start passing people as quickly as I can. The group kind of bunches up and for some reason this guy on my right decides to unclip his foot. Uh, I don't know about that. I'm definitely trying to pass people whenever I can, but I'm also definitely not trying to take too many risks this early in the race. And I felt like I was doing a pretty good job at managing those two things, passing people without taking too many risks. All right, I'm making pretty good progress. I'm passing people. Oh, who's this? Who's this on my left? Oh, snap. It's DJ. How about them apples, DJ? I just passed you on the inside. Check it. And 10 seconds later, I decide to wash out and crash. Oh, bummer. Uh, so I'm standing there for about two or three minutes trying to figure out why my back wheel will not spin. And it turns out that there were just rocks jammed into my shifter, preventing the brake from uh, becoming undone. So once I kicked those rocks out of the shifter, I got going again. And uh, at this point, I'm just committed to the chase. Uh, I'm not going to catch the peloton and it's going to be an all day gruel to the finish line but I came all the way here. I've got good legs and I'm going to pass as many darn people as I can for the next 80 miles. All right, I came into this race wanting to be with the leaders, and obviously that's not going to happen. So I am forced to reassess my goals. And right now, my number one goal is to not flat because I know that a bunch of people are going to flat throughout the course of this race. And if I can just prevent flats from happening, I will pass a lot of people. So there's an important thing to note here. You, you're going to get punched in the face and that you're gonna have to figure out what to do when that happens and so you've got to be able to handle the tough situations reassess the situation and create new goals and just keep plugging away like come on I, I've still got you know at this point I think I still got 70 60 miles to go to the finish I could catch a lot of people between now and then this race is not over and I am not giving up
All right, we're at mile 35, about to roll up to the first aid station around mile 38. And since I've dropped my chain for the last hour and 23 minutes, I have normalized power 325. My average heart rate has been right around 180, so I'm definitely pushing the pace. And for those who are wondering what I'm gonna get at the first aid station, I started with two bottles of Flow with 90 grams of carbs in each. And at each of the aid stations, I'm going to pick up another bottle of Flow with 60 grams of carbs in each. Each. I will also pick up a bottle of pure water at one point, and I will also eat uh, a, a sleeve of shot blocks, and I will also consume 160 grams of carbs via the Flow gel mix that I started with in my pocket. And don't forget to use promo code RADDADDIZZLE for 15% off your next order of Flow formula. I'm cool to let these guys pull a little bit on the flats and the downhills, but as soon as the pace is not where I would want it to be on the hills or the flats, I am going to the front and pushing the pace because I am fully committed to the chase. Props to these two guys, Oakley and Sparky, for sticking with me longer than anybody else. I think they stuck with me for about 60 miles throughout the day. That's uh, thanks for thanks for joining the fun, guys. After the race, Sparky was pretty proud of the fact that he was dropping a cyclocross rider on the downhills, uh, being a triathlete himself. Uh, but I already crashed and I don't really want to crash again and I really don't want to flat and so I'm totally cool with letting him go as fast as he wants in the downhills and I'm going to go at my own speed and I'm going to take my time and, and, and scout out and look and see exactly what's on the road so that uh, I don't hit anything sharp or big and my tires stay filled with air all day. Well, if it isn't Tobin Ortenblatt, we go way back on the cross bikes, and so I'm not going to lie, it definitely gives me a little spring in my step to come up and uh, pass him as he is completely detonated on this climb. What's up, buddy? About mile 75, we're rolling into aid station two and we have now merged with the 50 mile course and so we are passing a lot of the amateur riders out there on course. kind of start to panic because I don't see my crew here with my bottle uh, and so I grabbed this bottle from this guy I think it's just water but it turns out uh, there's a bunch of more people right around the turn up here and uh, yep Nina's there with my bottle so no worries As soon as you roll out of aid station two, there is this really steep climb, probably the hardest climb of the day. At about mile 80, I link up with Brayden Lang and we start riding together. And at this point, I've pretty much cracked. I have been on the chase for about four 
hours now and my normalized power has been 312 average heart rate 177 most of the time I was looking down at my heart rate it was over 180 uh, and so I knew that I was really burning through some energy and that eventually I'd hit the wall but I was hoping that I'd make it to the finish line but as you can see for the last hour of the race I really struggled to, to put the power down. We are literally two miles from the finish and who other than Pete Stetna rolls up on a hard tails on the last climb. Luckily we're able to hang with him. We hit this dirt section together and I am expecting Stetna to light it up the last little paved hill to the finish. Let's see if I can hang on. It was kind of weird sprinting. I mean, I felt like the spirit of gravel was was like mad at me because I sprinted, but I don't care. I mean, every place matters, and uh, I will absolutely out sprint Pete Stenna to the line because I want to finish one place higher than him, and I want to get into the Lifetime Series next year. And I chased my tail off for five hours, so yeah, I'm gonna sprint. And here are the final stats from the race. Race time, 5.08. My official finish time was 5.10.30. Normalized power, 300 watts. Average power, 269. Average heart rate, 174. 337 TSS, 0.81 IF. Hey, that is a mega day on the bike. And I am uh, I'm pretty happy with the way I rode. And if you look at my splits throughout the race, you can tell that I never gave up and was picking off people all day. And if you were following along for the Dylan versus Dizzle showdown, I am the sad bearer of news that Dylan came in about five minutes ahead of me in 18th and I was in 24th. But had I not crashed, I think it would have been a different story. I guess we'll find out next year. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to support me more, you can do so at Patreon or you can purchase a training plan. And if you are ready to take your training to the next level, sign up for coaching through Ignition Coach Co. As always, thanks to all the sponsors, Ignition, Rig, Lightner, and we'll see you in the next one.